dimensions uh, is occupying the space of what is the Soviet Union and China. That is the empire that will use great guile and deception as we had in the period of detente and the glasnost and perestroika of, of Gorbachev before the scheduled demolition of the Soviet Union. And then there would be the war that the prophecy refers to as the struggle of the strong against the strong. This empire of the North, consisting of Russia and China and North America, will go to war. And this 19th century text says they will fire their missiles on North America. And North America will fall and be conquered and brought into bondage. The next phrase is the most frightful thing of all. It is then that Zachary says in this text published in 1854, and then the whole world fell under the dominion of the firstborn of hell. This is the third secret. How close are we now to the great war that will usher in the godless empire, the one world religion of masonry? Let's examine a, pr a prediction made, which is not a prophecy, but a prediction. An interview was published on the 16th of January, 1962, in Look Magazine, an interview given by David Ben-Gurion, the sitting Prime Minister of Israel. You can go to a search engine and very easily find the text, the photograph of the page of Look Magazine. I mention this because about 20 years ago, on a radio program, I spoke of this interview and the B'nai B'rith Association, the Anti-Defamation League, accused me of fabricating the text, and that Ben-Gurion, they said, never made this statement. So I told the owner of the radio station, well, if you want to know the truth of the matter, Look Magazine, 16th of January, 1962. I said no more. I didn't need to say any more. And when you make the quotation, see, the Anti-Defamation League presents itself as a Jewish organization, and they say, well, this priest is anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. It is out of hatred for the Jews that he's saying this. But the Anti-Defamation League is not Jewish. It is part of the B'nai B'rith Masonic Lodge, the Masonic Association. It calls itself by a Hebrew name, Sons of the Covenant. But they're no more Jewish than the, than the priests of Baal who were, who were slaughtered by the prophet Isaiah. I, I, Isaiah, I mean the prophet, uh, uh, I think of uh, Elijah, the prophet Elijah. The prophet Elijah, he was the Jew not the pagan priests that he slew. I mention that because in spite of, in spite of all the Jewish sounding name, B'nai B'rith, it is Masonic. Now it's a very simple matter. There have been books written asking the question, trying to answer the question, what is a Jew? Well, I think what is fundamental that a Jew is a person who worships the God of the Jews. A pagan is a person who worships the gods of the pagans. B'nai B'rith is Masonic. It is pagan. It worships the gods of the pagans. It worships the gods. It worships the God that was worshipped by the priests of Baal, who were slaughtered 
by the Jewish prophet Elijah. So when I point the finger at masonry, it is not out of hatred for the Jews, but it is out of hatred as scripture says of the Christ, you have loved what is right and you have hated iniquity. It is out of hatred of the, the diabolical iniquity, of the worship of demons, of the false gods of the pagans. That is truly something worthy of hatred. Masonry is a detestable, diabolical institution. It merits only to be hated, to be opposed, and destroyed. Hello, New World Order. We are anonymous. Over the years, we have been watching you. Your campaigns of misinformation, suppression of dissent, your litigious nature, all of these things have caught our eye. With the display of your latest propaganda in mainstream society, the extent of your malign influence over those who trust you, who call you leader, has been made clear to us. Anonymous has therefore decided that your organization should be destroyed. For the good of your followers, for the good of mankind, for the laughs, we shall expel you from society and systematically dismantle the new world order. In its present form, we acknowledge you as a serious opponent. And we are prepared for a long, long campaign. You will not prevail forever against the angry masses of the body politic. Your methods, hypocrisy, and the artlessness of your organization have sounded its death knell. You cannot hide. We are everywhere. We cannot die. We are forever. We are getting bigger every day, and solely by the force of our ideas, malicious and hostile, as they often are. If you want another name for your opponent, then call us Legion, for we are many. Yet for all that, we are not as monstrous as you are. Still our methods are parallel to your own. Doubtless you will use the Anon's actions as an example of the persecution you have so long warned your followers would come, this is acceptable. In fact, it is encouraged. We are your resistance. Gradually as we merge our pulse with that of your order the suppression of your followers will become increasingly difficult to maintain. Believers will wake and see that liberty has no price. They will know that the stress, the frustration that they feel is not something that may be blamed upon anonymous. No, they will see that it stems from a source far closer to each. Yes, we are the resistance but the sum of suppression we could ever muster is eclipsed by that of the New World Order. Knowledge is free. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Pope Leo XIII said that masonry must be defeated. It is not an institution that we can seek ecumenical friendship with. It is, it is an organization that must be uprooted and wiped off the face of the earth. And the hand of God is going to wipe masonry off the face of the earth in the great chastisement. And in the time of triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, there will no longer be the devilish institution of Freemasonry. And so, the text of that interview of David Ben-Gurion, who was not speaking as a mouthpiece of the Jewish people or the Jewish religion or the Israeli nation. Rather, he is speaking as a mouthpiece of masonry. When he stated in 1962 how the world will change within about 25 years. Very interesting, he places the context at the end of the Cold War, when the Cold War will end. This is very, very interesting. We can see that there was already the plans to end the Cold War in the manner that it was ended. 
In fact, 25 years later, 1987, exactly 25 years later, there was the well-known speech of President Gorbachev to the Communist Party when he said, gentlemen, comrades, don't be alarmed by all this talk of perestroika, glasnost, and the coming democracy in the Soviet Union. Four years later, that democracy came. Gorbachev told the Communist Party, don't be afraid of this. Don't be alarmed by this. He said that in 1987. He said, this is only cosmetic. These changes will only be cosmetic. It is to lull the Americans to sleep. 1984, Anatoly Golitsyn published a book foretelling the, the restructuring of the Soviet Union that Gorbachev undertook, which brought about the transformation of the Soviet Union into the Russian Federation and the Commonwealth of Independent States. In the Club of Rome, founded with the money of David Rockefeller, the globalists who worked together for that institution that they refer to as global governance, we need to have something that will frighten all the people of the world. There will be a unanimous fear that we, that we can use to impose a world government on the people of the world. And that will be this thing that we call global warming, climate change. So last December at the um, Copenhagen conference, they're talking about the imposition of global carbon taxes, a crushing burden of taxation that will rob the working classes especially and the poorer classes of the money that they need to survive, to buy food and to, and, and to provide for their basic needs. That will be taxed away from them. And on the other hand, the policy using carbon credits and such to deindustrialize the world, decrease production. What you're going to create is artificial shortages this way. And they're going to tell us that the, the problem is that we have too many people. Whereas it's not that there are too many people, it's not that the world is overpopulated, but they have artificially engineered by design the economic crises that will culminate according to their plan in the year 2012. At the Wilderness Conference in Colorado, 1987, under the auspices of the United Nations, this convention was discussing uh, taking developed land, farmland and developed land and turning it back into wilderness. Deindustrialization. They were discussing this in 1987. And at that conference, Edmund the Rothschild was there, David Rockefeller was there, the Rothschild frontman Morris Strong was there, and they let it be known that they were planning for a global financial crisis. And that will culminate in the year 2012, and then they will foist on the world a global central bank. There'll be one central bank for the whole world. Last year at the G20 meeting, you may recall that President Medvedev held up a coin announcing the coming of this global unit of currency. And Prime Minister Putin advocated the creation of a global central bank.